How you doing, Mrs. Lewis? <laughs> doing great. Are you ready to have a new house? <laughs> yes. How do you dream this house to be? Perfect. Perfect? <laughs> Thank you. What do you, what do you want most out of your house? Happy times and comfort. <laughs> How about the design, goofball? Structurally sound. I want rodents to stay out. Yeah? Yeah. So and what are they working on today? They're working on the soil sample for our foundation. Oh yeah? So what does that mean? It means that they're going to pull up some of our dirt and they're going to study it. We'll send it off to be studied so that the engineer can tell us how to build our foundation. So we're building a house on what's called blackland clay. It's a calcareous soil and it's what engineers would call very expansive, which is a fancy word for saying when it's wet, it swells up and when it's dry, it makes big old cracks like you saw. The soil's really good for growing corn, but not the best for construction. So to ensure that the house has a good foundation and doesn't have big cracks, we get a geotechnical service out here to do a soil sample and they'll, then they'll take it off to a lab and do some engineering work to see the low bearing capacity of the soil. And then a structural engineer will, based on this information, make us a uh, plan for the slab. I thought it was kind of funny that these two guys in the middle start listening to something on their earpiece, like maybe the mothership was talking to them or something. Part of the testing is to count how many times this weight needs to drop on the sampler to see how, I guess you'd say how hard the soil is. So here are the guys marking off a specific distance, and now the other technician is dropping the weight down, and then they count. You can see the guy just marked on the bumper. Now they pull the sample out of the ground. While I was filming, these two guys never said a single word to each other. They're definitely professionals. Now he's pulling the sample out of the tube, and he'll mark down that this was taken at, say, five feet, and then they got this 18-inch piece of clay that they will then take to the lab for an analysis. About a month after the sample was taken, we got a report back from the lab. It's a 22-page report. Some of it I understand, and some of it is a little bit above my pay scale, but it's still interesting to look over. They took samples from three feet all the way down to 20 feet. We have three different soil types in that 20 feet. From zero to three is, uh, it's called fat clay, and then there's two different levels of lean clay. Of particular interest is that first layer which has high plasticity. And to quote the test report, this building site has a high potential for soil induced movement of the foundation. Based on the crack I showed earlier, you really don't need an engineering degree to figure that out though. A structural engineer took the test data and our home plans and created a engineered slab to prevent future cracking. Part of the requirements is to bring in some non-expansive fill. The part of the design I find to be most interesting are these tile-like patterns that formed by the beams and the blue uh, post-tension cables. Those beams or ditches are specified by the engineer to be 32 inches deep and they have two cables in the bottom and one cable in the top of the beam. I think it's pretty cool to see the cable stretched out like the tentacles of some kind of sea creature. The black plastic is there to prevent ground moisture from going up through the slab into the house. All the testing, engineering, and actual installation was done by one company, Consolidated Reinforcement. I really like one company doing all the work. That way there's not any finger pointing if there's a problem later on. It's just one company who's responsible. A crew of three did the initial layout, and then about 10 in the morning, two of them drove off, and this guy here worked on the slab for the rest of the day till 8 o'clock at night. This was done in the middle of August with temperatures exceeding 100 degrees. And the guy only took a break at 1.30. He's definitely a hard worker. Here he's putting the cables through the forms of the foundation. The blue is only a polyethylene sleeve so that the actual steel cable can slide in the concrete when the concrete's dry. In the inset, you can see how the cables are attached to the forms so that once the concrete's dry and the forms are removed, you can tension the cables. Each cable has an end that's held within the concrete and another end that is sticking out of the concrete for later tensioning. Here you can see a perimeter beam with two cables at the bottom and one at the top. And you also see a grid of cables that are being held up by these plastic chairs.
This is what the end of the cable looks like, where that sticks out of the forms. And you can see in the inset where later somebody will be tightening these up. And this is what the end of the cables looks like on the end where it's going to get tightened up later. Plumbing, electrical, reinforcing has all been inspected and we're just waiting for concrete day. Or more accurately, concrete night. Temperatures are 105 degrees. It's the middle of August, so they're doing most of the pour before the sun comes up. Pouring the concrete seems like the perfect choreography of trucks, pump, guys doing the actual pouring. It's pretty impressive to see at night. And besides the occasional laughter of some joke, I don't think they ever really spoke. I was pretty lucky to get this crew. Uh, two days later, they were doing an elementary school starting at midnight. There was also a representative from Consolidated Reinforcement there during the pour. So using their services is kind of a one-stop shop to make sure that you have the perfect concrete slab. They started the pour at 4 a.m. By 9 o'clock, they were doing the final section. A few hours later, they were wrapping things up with some power troweling. This video is mostly about the engineering for the concrete foundation, and I'll be posting a future video that has more information about the actual concrete pour. The next day, a couple of the guys showed up and did some relief cuts as specified by the engineer's plans. And then five days after the pour, these two guys showed up from Consolidated Reinforcement and started tensioning the cables. The tension unit is pretty interesting. It's a hydraulic cylinder that is powered by an electric hydraulic pump. And the technician monitors the hydraulic pressure and watches as the cylinder pulls out and tensions the cable within that blue sleeve you saw earlier. And then right behind is another guy cutting the cables off. These two guys rolled up about 6 p.m. and I was wondering if they were really gonna get it done. But by 8.30 that night, they were all finished. Here you can see a close-up of the hydraulic cylinder tensioning the cables. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. Please comment, please subscribe. Have a great day. God bless.